Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning, rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you. My dear brothers and sisters, God has promised to open our graves and to raise the dead to new life. Christ, who died and rose again, is the first fruit of this promise. He comes to us now in this Eucharist and in the power of his Spirit to give us a further pledge of eternal life. So my brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you redeem us from all our iniquities. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Ah. Uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Understand the sound is not synced with the video, and for that uh, we apologize. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than its sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. The one who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies also, through this, through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. Reading the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and his, her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her son, her sister, and Lazarus. So when he, found, when he heard that he was ill, he remained uh, in the place, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were, were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then told them, our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I'm going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he's asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death when they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I'm glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but he was, well, he was still there where, where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this one would so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead men came out tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, today's readings remind us that God alone has the power over death. The first reading describes a vision of the prophet Ezekiel during Israel's captivity and exile in Babylon that happened between 587 and 539 before Christ. The Babylonian Empire had destroyed Jerusalem and carried Israel off into exile. The Israelites felt dead and buried. Babylon had become their grave. But Ezekiel prophesied that God would one day open their graves and that together they would rise from the dead. Ezekiel's vision of the dry bones is grounded in firm belief in the restoration of Israel. Historically, the Israelites did rise from the dead in their release from Babylon in 538 before Christ. 600 years later, Christians would look back at the Ezekiel's prophecy and see its ultimate fulfillment in Jesus' resurrection from the dead. In the Gospel story, the sisters Martha and Mary are profoundly grieved, quite naturally, by the death of their brother Lazarus. But each one reacts differently. When Jesus arrives, Mary remains at home, mourning. Martha goes out to meet him. Jesus tells Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. And then asks, do you believe this? Martha responds, yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. This confession of faith in John's account parallels the confession of faith by Peter in the Gospel according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It would take time for Martha and Peter to understand the implication of their confessions. Like them, and the prophet Ezekiel, we are called to believe in the power of God of life, on the power of God of life over death. And like Lazarus, we would believe in Jesus will rise from our graves at the sound of his voice. Jesus, our beloved friend and Savior, is the one whom God sends to free us and to give us life. As the COVID-19 pandemic seems to get worse each day, it's, good, it's a good time to ask the Lord where he needs us, where he needs to heal particular parts of our lives. And as he shows us these, we should lean into him and say, Jesus, I trust in you. This is clearly a time of discomfort, pain, and testing for all of us. In his address to the city of Rome and to the world a few days ago, Pope Francis painted an accurate picture of our situation and also puts forth the authentic way forward for us. Let me make a few remarks from a report of that address on that historic occasion of his blessing, of that blessing to the city and to the world. And I found this on the Vatican website. And this is the Holy Father. For weeks now, it's been, it's been evening. Thick, dark, thick darkness has gathered over our squares, our cities, and our, our streets, filling everything with a deafening silence and a distressing void that stops everything as it passes by. We feel it in the air. We notice it in people's gestures. Their glances give them away. We find ourselves afraid and lost. In this situation, we do feel afraid and lost, like the disciples whose boat was in danger of sinking while Jesus slept in the stern. The COVID-19 pandemic has reminded us that we are all on the same boat said the Holy Father. So we call out to Jesus, remembering what the Lord, what the disciples asked him, uh, teacher, do you not care if we perish? The Pope says that these words would have shaken Jesus because he more than anyone cares about us. The storm, says the Pope, exposes our vulnerability and uncovers those false and superfluous certain uncertainties about which, around which we have constructed our daily schedules and lives and lays bare all, the, all those attempts to anesthetize ourselves. What's revealed, he said, is our belonging as brothers and sisters, that is to say, our common humanity. Then the Holy Father picked up the theme of Jesus' question. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Hope said that we've all gone ahead 
at breakneck speed, ignoring the, wa the, uh, the, uh, the waters, uh, the, the injustice, and the cries of the poor of our ailing planet. We've carried on regardless, thinking that we would stay healthy in a world that was sick. In our stormy sea, we, ne we now cry out, Wake up, Lord! Actually, the Holy Father said, it is Jesus who's calling out to us to be converted, calling us to faith. You are calling us to seize this time of trial as a time of choosing, he said. Now is not the time of God's judgment, but of our own. A time to choose what matters and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. Pope Francis said that we can draw lessons from the many people who, even though fearful, have reacted by giving their lives, including medical personnel, supermarket clerks, cleaners, priests, police officers, and volunteers. This, he said, is the force of the Spirit, poured out in fashion and courageous and generous self-denial. The Holy Father said that faith begins when we realize we are in need of salvation and are not self-sufficient. We turn to Jesus and hand him our fears, said the Pope, he will conquer them. Because this is God's strength, turning to the good, everything that happens to us, even the bad things. He brings serenity into our storms, because with God, life never dies. So God asks us now, in the midst of our tempest, tempest, to awaken and to put into practice that solidarity and hope, capable of giving strength, support, and meaning to these hours when everything seems to be floundering. The cross of Christ, said Pope Francis, is the anchor that has saved us, the rudder that has redeemed us, and our hope because by his cross we have been healed and embraced so that nothing and no one can separate us from his redeeming love. In the midst of the isolation, when we're suffering from a lack of tenderness and chances to meet up, we experience the loss of so many things, he said, let us once again listen to the proclamation that saves us. He is risen and is living by our side. So we embrace this cross in the hardships of the present time and make room in our hearts for the creativity that only the Spirit is capable of inspiring. Embracing the Lord in order to embrace hope, this is the strength of our faith that frees us from fear and gives us hope. Brothers and sisters, since it's a Sunday, let's join, let's join me now in praying to make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the time of Christ's suffering and death draws nearer, let us ask the Father to lead us through the dark moments of the Passover of his Son to the glory of his resurrection. For the leaders of the world, I'm sorry, for the, for the Holy Church of God, that in proclaiming God as the source of life within us, we may recognize the sanctity of life within us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the leaders of this world, that they may grow in wisdom and goodness as they consider and discuss ways to care for the planet and for all the people on it. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering in the current outbreak of COVID-19, that they may be healed and for the happy repose of all who have died from this sickness in recent weeks, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the scientists, health professionals, public officials, and all who are serving the common good in this difficult and uncertain time, that they will be filled with wisdom and understanding, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may roll away the stones that block us from becoming closer to God and assist others in unwrapping the burial bonds that hold them haunt bondage in bondage, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who need prayers, for the requests in our parish book of petitions, and for our own intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. For the servicemen and women whose names appear in the gathering space, for those on the St. Francis prayer chain, for Mary Rice and John McCormick, and for all those who have no one else to pray for them, and for the intentions of the people of St. Francis for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, particularly Catherine Brentkowski, Terry King, John Major, Dennis Meehan, Robert Kraskowitz, and Fred Thurr, that they may know the peace and joy of God's love through all eternity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers of your church. Bring forth the resurrection of people who trust in your promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your financial support during this time. I uh, very, very appreciate the people who have been coming and dropping donations off in the mailbox or mailing things in. Uh, I also want to remind you that you can sign up for Faith Direct. If you wish to do that, you can include that in the comments below. Send me an email or phone me at the rectory. I'll be glad to send you the sign of information for this. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we perceive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, God forever. Okay. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit and contrite heart, may we accept the right, may our sacrifice in sight be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands, for in his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, that having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God he raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life, through whom the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this uh, is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for this forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, to look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi, our holy patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleased in you at their passing from this life, to your kind admittance to your kingdom, Though we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, and bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other now the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die, says the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of the Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. Bless the Lord your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Be to God. Amen. Just want to say, just uh, thank everyone for joining us today. Also want to just make mention of the fact we have the opportunity to pray morning and evening prayer with the Liturgy of the Hours. Deacon Jim Dadovich is hosting that. We've sent out a flock note about that, uh, but it's a wonderful opportunity. We're praying this at 7.30 in the morning and 7.30 in the evening. Morning prayer will continue right through to Holy Saturday at 7.30 in the morning. Evening prayer will continue right through the Wednesday of Holy Week. Uh, and then for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, we are hoping to live stream uh, the services. Sadly, we're not going to be able to invite people to join us for those, but at least we can, we can, we have our, that's our plan to live stream things. So join us, please, for morning prayer at 7.30, evening prayer at 7.30 as well. If you don't, didn't see the link, please send us an email or maybe drop us a comment. We'll follow up and make sure you have it. Thank you all. God bless you. And one final comment. This is Deacon Jim. We, we know the audio and video is not synced. Uh, for those who view a recording of the Mass, uh, it will be corrected before it's posted. We apologize. We stopped, thought we fixed it before. Uh, the Mass began, but unfortunately, uh, we hoped Murphy would sleep in from uh, Murphy's Law, but unfortunately, he decided to wake up in time for Mass. God bless you all. Thank you.